Deep Space Climate Observatory formerly known as Triana, and officially known as Gorisat is a NOAA space weather and Earth observation satellite. It was launched by SpaceX on a Falcon 9 launch vehicle on February 11, 2015, from Cape Canaveral. It was originally developed as a NASA satellite proposed in 1998 by then Vice President Al Gore for the purpose of Earth observation. It is in a Lissajou orbit at the Sun-Earth L1 Lagrangian point, 1.5 million kilometers (930,000 miles) from Earth to monitor variable solar wind condition, provide early warning of approaching coronal mass ejections, and observe phenomena on Earth, including changes in ozone, aerosols, dust, and volcanic ash, cloud height, vegetation cover, and climate. At this location it has a continuous view of the Sun and of the sunlit side of the Earth. The satellite is orbiting the Sun-Earth L1 point in a six-month period, with a spacecraft Earth-Sun angle varying from 4 to 15 degrees. It takes full Earth pictures about every two hours and is able to process them faster than other Earth observation satellites. DSCOVR started orbiting around L1 by June 8, 2015, just over 100 days after launch. After the spacecraft arrived on site and entered its operational phase, NASA began releasing near real time images of Earth through the EPIC Instruments website. History Originally known as Triana, named after Rodrigo de Triana, the first of Columbus's crew to sight land in the Americas, the satellite's original purpose was to provide a near-continuous view of the entire Earth and make that live image available via the Internet. Al Gore hoped not only to advance science with these images, but also to raise awareness of the Earth itself, updating the influential blue marble photograph taken by Apollo 17. In addition to an imaging camera, a radiometer would take the first direct measurements of how much sunlight is reflected and emitted from the whole Earth albedo. This data could constitute a barometer for the process of global warming. The scientific goals expanded to measure the amount of solar energy reaching Earth, cloud patterns, weather systems, monitor the health of Earth's vegetation, and track the amount of UV light reaching the surface through the ozone layer. In 1999, NASA's Inspector General reported that the basic concept of the Triana mission was not peer-reviewed", and, "...Triana's added science may not represent the best expenditure of NASA's limited science funding." The Bush administration put the project on hold shortly after George W. Bush's inauguration. Members of the U.S. Congress asked the National Academy of Sciences whether the project was worthwhile. The resulting report, released March 2000, stated that the mission was, "...strong and scientifically vital." Triana was removed from its original launch opportunity on STS-107 the ill-fated Columbia mission in 2003. The $100 million satellite remained in storage for the duration of the Bush administration. In November 2008 the satellite was removed from storage and began recertification for a possible launch on board a Delta II or a Falcon 9. Al Gore used part of his book Our Choice 2009 as an attempt to revive debate on the DSCOVR payload. 
The book mentions legislative efforts by Senators Barbara Mikulski and Bill Nelson to get the satellite launched. NASA renamed the Satellite Deep Space Climate Observatory in an attempt to regain support for the project. In February 2011, the Obama administration attempted to secure funding to repurpose the DSCOVR spacecraft as a solar observatory to replace the aging Advanced Composition Explorer ACE spacecraft. In September 2013, NASA cleared DSCOVR to proceed to the implementation phase, targeting an early 2015 launch, which had been announced in December 2012 as launching on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. NASA Goddard Space Flight Center is providing management and systems engineering to the mission. In the 2017 documentary An Inconvenient Sequel, Truth to Power, Al Gore speaks of the history of the DSCOVR satellite and its relation to climate change. Topic: Spacecraft. DSCOVR is built on the SMEX light spacecraft bus and has a launch mass of approximately 570 kilograms (1,257 pounds). The main science instrument sets are the Sun Observing Plasma Magnetometer PLASMIG, and the Earth Observing NIST Advanced Radiometer and Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera EPIC. DSCOVR has two deployable solar arrays, a propulsion module, boom, and antenna. Topic Instruments Topic Plasmig The plasma magnetometer, Plasmig, measures solar wind for space weather predictions. It has three instruments. Magnetometer measures magnetic field. Faraday cup measures positively charged particles. Electrostatic analyzer measures electrons. Topic: <inaudible> Epic. The Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera Epic takes images of the sunlit side of Earth for various Earth science monitoring purposes in ten different channels from ultraviolet to near-infrared. Ozone and aerosol levels are monitored along with cloud dynamics, properties of the land, and vegetations. EPIC has an aperture diameter of 30.5 cm, 12 in, a focal ratio of 9.38, a field of view of 0.61 degrees, and an angular sampling resolution of 1.07 arcseconds. Earth's apparent diameter varies from 0.45 degrees to 0.53 degrees full width. Exposure time for each of the 10 narrowband channels 317, 325, 340, 388, 443, 552, 680, 688, 764, and 779 nm is about 40 ms. The camera produces 2048 times 2048 pixel images, but to increase the number of downloadable images to 10 per hours, the resolution is averaged to 1024 times 1024 on board. The final resolution is 25 kilometers pixel, 16 miles pixel. Topic NISTAR 
National Institute of Standards and Technology Advanced Radiometer measures a radiance of the sunlit face of the Earth. This data is to be used to study changes in Earth's radiation budget caused by natural and human activities. The radiometer measures in four channels. For total radiation in ultraviolet, visible and infrared in the range 0.2 to 100 micrometers. For reflected solar radiation in ultraviolet, visible and near infrared in the range 0.2 to 4 micrometers. For reflected solar radiation in infrared in the range 0.7 to 4 micrometers. For calibration purposes in the range 0. 3 to 1 micrometer. Topic Launch. The launch provider SpaceX successfully launched DSCOVR on February 11, 2015, following two scrubbed launches. Topic Launch Attempt History. Topic Post Launch Flight Test. SpaceX planned to conduct a test flight where they would attempt to bring the first stage back through the atmosphere and land the expended first stage on a 90 by 50 meter (300 feet times 160 feet) floating landing platform. Relative to earlier tests, the first stage return on DSCOVR was much more challenging, especially in atmospheric re-entry due to the deep space nature of the Earth-Sun L1 launch trajectory for DSCOVR. SpaceX expected deceleration force loads to be twice as high and rocket heating to quadruple over the re-entry conditions on Falcon 9 Flight 14. Before the launch, the drone ship was in ocean surface conditions that made the barge landing infeasible. Therefore, the landing platform attempt was called off, and the first stage made an over-water soft landing instead. This continued the collection of returnable first stage test data on all the earlier phases of the flight test and added data on stage survival following a high-speed, high-load atmospheric entry. Topic Operation On July 6, 2015, DSCOVR returned its first publicly released view of the entire sunlit side of Earth from 1,475,207 kilometers (916,651 miles) away, taken by the EPIC instrument. EPIC provides a daily series of Earth images, enabling the first-time study of daily variations over the entire globe. The images, available 12 to 36 hours after they are made, have been posted to a dedicated web page since September 2015. DSCOVR was placed in operation at the L1 Lagrangian point to monitor the sun because the constant stream of particles from the sun, the solar wind, reaches L1 about 60 minutes before reaching Earth. DSCOVR will usually be able to provide a 15 to 60 minute warning before a surge of particles and magnetic field from a coronal mass ejection CME reaches Earth and creates a geomagnetic storm. DSCOVR data will also be used to improve predictions of the impact locations of a geomagnetic storm to be able to take preventative action. 
Electronic technologies such as satellites in geosynchronous orbit are at risk of unplanned disruptions without warnings from DSCOVR and other monitoring satellites at L1. On July 16 to 17, 2015, DSCOVR took a series of images showing the Moon engaged in a transit of Earth. The images were taken between 1950 and 045 coordinated universal time. The animation was composed of monochrome images taken in different color filters at 30 second intervals for each frame, resulting in a slight color fringing for the moon in each finished frame. Due to its position at Sun Earth L1, DSCOVR will always see the Moon illuminated and will always see its far side when it passes in front of Earth. On October 19, 2015, NASA opened a new website to host near live, blue marble images taken by Epic of Earth. At least 12 images are released each day at regular intervals, showcasing the Earth as it rotates on its axis. The resolution of the images ranges from 10 to 15 km per pixel 6.2 to 9.4 miles, pixel, and the short exposure times renders points of starlight invisible. Topic Animations Topic See also Clouds and the Earth's Radiant Energy System Stereo Visual Monitoring Camera List of Falcon Nine launches